In this topic, we're going to take on the uh, factoring trinomials, and these particular trinomials have a leading coefficient of 1. So I'll explain what that means. By trinomial, it's a polynomial with, with three separate terms, and this one is x squared plus 7x plus 10. And uh, a coefficient is a number which multiplies the, the variable part. And so we have 1x squared, 1's a coefficient, 7x, 7's a coefficient, and 10. 10 is a coefficient. You might object to say, well, there's no variable part there. Well, uh, yes, there is. <laughs> it's 10x to the 0 power. All right, a little technical, um, you know, explanation there, but 10 is also considered a coefficient. So it's the numerical parts. And when the leading coefficient is 1 of a trinomial, which happens to be a quadratic expression or second degree expression, then uh, life is good. We have uh, nice ways of, of trying to factor these. And, and I should tell you, not everything factors in life. Um, just like there are prime numbers which cannot be factored, you know, like for example 17 or, or, or 11, those can't be factored. Uh, well, certainly there are polynomials that, that also cannot be factored. But we're, we're focused on factoring the ones that we can factor here. All right, so um, these happen to be uh, have a fairly uh, friendly technique for factoring, and uh, and basically it's it's doing the the foil process in reverse. Now you might have heard that term before. Foil. Foil is when you multiply a binomial times a binomial, you know, a two-term polynomial times a two-term polynomial, and you multiply the first terms, the outer terms, the inner terms, and the last terms. And uh, that's where the word foil comes from. So this uh, factoring technique is actually going in reverse of that. It's sort of taking it apart, taking the foil method apart. And so when I, when I teach this to beginning algebra classes, I, I tell them you've got to be very good at multiplying before you can get good at factoring. And uh, because you know, the better you are at multiplying polynomials together, uh, the easier it is for you to take them apart by factoring. All right, so I'm going to... Um, First of all, and I should have mentioned this, there is no greatest common factor here. You know, that's what we just studied. And um, because there's no number other than 1 that could be factored out of 1, 7, or 10. And there are no x's in, in this term, at least not an x to a positive power. And so we can't factor out a, an x here. So uh, that leaves us to try this, this technique of factoring where I break it up into a product of binomials. And I'm going to put x's here because when I, if I were to multiply this back, my first terms will be x times x to get x squared. So the only way I can get x squared, factoring it with binomials, is to put x's here so I get x squared. Now, it, there are numbers that have to go here and here. And what must they be? Well, in the FOIL method, we multiply the last terms together. And that should get us 10. So it really gives us two choices. 10 is either 1 times 10 or 2 times 5. And, um, and let me do the wrong one here, just, just for a moment, to uh, show you what happens. So uh, suppose I picked 1 and 10 as my factors. So here's what I'm talking about. If we factored with, with those numbers, then, you know, put 1 and 10 there. And with everything being a plus sign, having a plus sign, then we should have plus signs here as well. If I were to uh, multiply this back, foil it back, I would get x squared. You know, the first terms multiplied together get x squared. The outer terms would be x times 10 is plus 10x. The inner terms, 1 times x is plus x. And then the last term, since 1 times 10, which is 10. So uh, my, uh, <laughs> my 11th grade math teacher called this the smiley method. And because uh, you have the ears and the nose and the eyebrows and the, and the grin. Oh, well, she had little crazy things like that. She was probably slightly crazy herself. Uh, by amazing coincidence, I ended up dating her niece when I went off to college at Florida State, about 250 miles away. And her niece was from the opposite side of the state, so 
Uh, in fact, I think we I think we dated for two months before I realized that uh, she was my love great teacher's niece. Anyway, um, well, you're here for math, right? Not for my old stories, but I, I should tell you that this this young lady I dated was one of the first eight women fighter pilots in the Navy. Quite an accomplishment. And so, uh, and I lost track of her over the Philippines. Uh, you would have never guessed that uh, my 11th grade teacher's uh, niece would be, be so accomplished. Okay. All right, so um, we get x squared plus 11x plus 10. So I combine my terms here. That my middle term. And is it the same as up there? No, of course not. So it's it's wrong. Alright, so here's the moral of this story. That um, and I have seen this countless times, and here I go again. I'm gonna tell you something that a lot of students do. Alright, that, that screws up, gets some wrong answers, hurts their grade. And uh, and if a lot of students do that, that means you could do that. Alright? Uh, you're not immune from this. And it's very simple. If you don't check your factoring, you're bound to make mistakes like this. All right, it's going to happen. And um, but but here's a corollary to that. Um, I have found that students who check all their factoring in this chapter usually get A's. Almost always get A's on the test. They diligently check their factoring on everything. I can see their work, and by gosh, they they typically get A's on this test. So up to you, you know, how much do you want to invest in your in your excellence? I don't know. Um, but uh, and one other thing, as many thousands of these as I've done in my lifetime, and I've been I've been factoring polynomials since about 1968, um, that as many of those as I've done, I still check my factoring. Now I do it mentally almost all the time because I'm pretty good at that. Uh, I'm good at multiplying stuff out in my head in, in algebra when it's not too big. And so I do mentally check these things. But, uh, and, and most of you are not, maybe not, probably aren't there yet where you can do this very well mentally. Um, maybe, maybe a few of you are. So don't be bashful about writing things out and checking yourself. So this was a bad choice, one in 10. Bad choice. What about two and five? Will that work? And, and by the way, there's no guarantee that you can factor everything. I mean, there are polynomials that cannot be factored. And uh, but this one will because uh, if I put my, my pluses in there, and if we foil this out, let me let me check it. I'll show the check. Now I won't always show the check on these, just to save time on the video. Just like I would in class, I don't take the time to show all the checks. But um, that shouldn't stop you from checking. All right, so if I multiply this back, I would get, what? x squared plus 5x plus 2x plus 10. Now, now let me write that out. So I had x squared plus 5x plus 2x plus 10. And that gives me x squared plus 7x plus 10 when I combine the terms, which is what I started with. So that is factored correctly. All right. Well, um, it's going to get a little bit worse, so I'm going to do a few more in this, in this video, but I need to race the board.